So when we add those two things together, then we can figure out how old they were when they died. 자, 예를 들어서 어떤 사람이 30살에 아들을 낳고 그 다음에 70년을 더 살다가 죽었다. 그러면 아, 30에다가 70 못되면 100살에 죽었구나 알수 있잖아요. For example, if it says that somebody had their son when they were 30 years old and then they lived 70 years after that and then died, then we can figure out that uh, 30 plus 70 equals 100, so they were 100 years old when they died. 그래서 이 노아는요, 950살까지 살았어요. So Noah lived to be 950 years old. 그 다음에 샘은 100살에 아름바카스를 낳고 500년을 더 살았거든요. 그러니까 100에다 500 더하면 600살까지 산 거죠. And Shem had his son Arkashem when he was 100 years old, and he lived 500 more years after that. So 100 plus 500 means he died at 600. And then Arkashem lived to be 438. Shem lived to be 433. Eber lived to be 464. 그 다음에 벨렛은 239세까지 살고 네, 벨렛은 239세까지 살고 루우도 239세까지 살고 루우도 239세까지 살고 루우도 239세까지 살고 나우는 제일 빨리 죽었어요 나우는 148세밖에 못 살았어요 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 그 다음에 대라는 245세까지 살았어요 and Terah lived to be 205. And Abraham lived to be 175. Now, are these numbers fake? Uh, no, they are true. Uh, they're the truth. God recorded these numbers in the genealogy of the Bible because we have to know these numbers. And these numbers contain amazing mysteries and secrets within them. The first thing that we're going to study tonight is the fact that human lifespan was suddenly cut short. So human lifespan was shortened. Now there are two places in the genealogy where the human lifespan is suddenly shortened. The first place is uh, right after the flood that human lifespan was suddenly reduced. So you see that Noah lived to be 950 and even Shem lived to be 600 years old. But after Shem, you can see that human lifespan drops into the 400s. So Noah and Shem are people who were born before the flood, and then after Shem, starting with Arkashah, these are all people who were born after the flood. So here we can know that human lifespan was reduced because of the flood. And why is that so? It is because after the flood, the climate of the earth was completely changed. For your reference, you can look up Psalm 104, verses 6 through 8, where it tells us that during the, the flood, mountains went down and then valleys rose up, so the earth was completely turned upside down. And 
And also, before the flood, the earth was very warm and mild, and throughout the year, during all four seasons, it was a very comfortable place to live in. But after the flood, it started to have coldness and, and heat uh, that was extreme. So in Genesis chapter 8 verse 22, it tells us that after the flood, we start getting the heat and the cold on earth. So the word for heat in Hebrew is home, and the word for coldness in Hebrew is core, and both of these words signify extreme kind of heat and cold. So here in Boston, when it gets the coldest, how, how cold does it get? Minus what? 20? 20 below? 20? 그 시베리아 이런 데 가면은요 영하 마이너스 80도씩까지 올라가죠. If you go to places like Siberia, it gets to be minus 80 degrees. 그러면 <웃음> 여기 포스터는 제일 더울 때가 몇 도예요? Now, when it gets hottest here, how hot does it get? So Pastor Andrew and I, we went to a place called Dubai in the Middle East. And they said, uh, it's kind of cool today. But it was so hot for us that we couldn't even breathe. And that was, it was 68 degrees Celsius on, on that day. So here on earth, where it's hot, it gets really hot, and uh, where it gets cold, it gets really cold, extremely cold. But before the flood, they didn't have anything like this. But because of the flood, we started to get these extreme heat and extreme cold. And then starting from that point, human lifespan started to get short. Also, this is something that a, a doctor at Seoul National University, who's an expert on vitamins, is saying. And he says that during the time of Noah, human body was able to produce its own vitamins. But after the flood, he says that human, the human body cannot produce a vitamin C anymore, so we have to take in vitamin C, uh, 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 we have to eat it. So those are some of the things that also tell us why the human lifespan got shorter after the flood. But when we go to heaven, all these things that got destroyed, they all they will all be restored. And in heaven, human beings don't get any older. We don't get old. So think back to when you were about 16 or 20 years old. So back then you all had very nice skin, rosy cheeks, you were very pretty, right? 
근데 지금 이제 나이 40, 50, 60, 70대니까 주름살 생기고 김이 죽었게 생기고 응? 얼굴이 다 크게 쭈글쭈글해지고 늙었잖아요. But now that you're 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, you all have wrinkles on your faces, freckles, and all kinds of things going on. 그리고 이제 옷다 벗고 거울 딱 보면은 옛날에 내 피부가 피곤했잖아요, 이뻤잖아요. And then also when you're completely undressed, when you're naked, you look at yourself in the mirror. In the past, your skin was very taut and was very nice, right? 근데 지금은 벌써 피부가 쭉 처지잖아, 처지고 이 배들이 <laughs> but now everything's sagging, right? So when you, even when you look at yourself, you don't look too good. <laughs> but don't worry. Because when we go to heaven, we will all be changed into a spiritual body that is a, a lump of light. We will be light giving bodies. Miss America would be better people. And we will all be so beautiful that we're more beautiful than Miss America. I mean, Miss World would be better people. We would be more beautiful than this world. And there will come a day when we will all be changed like this. And we will only be changed like that when we believe in Jesus. If you don't believe in Jesus, then you will be in eternal suffering in hell. So I pray that all of you will believe in Jesus well, so that you will all be Miss Heaven or Mr. Heaven in the Kingdom of God. And then secondly, there's another place in the genealogy where the human lifespan is suddenly reduced. The second place is starting with Pele, human lifespan is cut short. So if you see here, Arpusha, Shella, and Eber all lived at least in the 400. 400s, like 438, 433, or 464. But starting with Pele, human lifespan started to get reduced down into the 200s. So the human lifespan here got cut short by about half. So why did the human lifespan suddenly get shorter starting with Pele? The Bible verse that teaches us the reason why that happened is the Genesis chapter 10 verse 25. Let's all look up Genesis chapter 10 verse 25. Genesis chapter 10 verse 25, it says, And two sons were born to Eber, the name of the one was Pelech, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Jotan. So here it says that the earth was divided in the days of Pelech. So what does it mean to say that the earth was divided in the days of Pelech? So the name Peleg in Hebrew means division. So when it says that the earth was divided in the days of Peleg, it means it's talking about the incident of the Tower of Babel. So as they were building the Tower of Babel, they were supposed to glorify the name of God, but what they were trying to do was make a name for themselves. See, why do we live? The reason we live is so that we may 
they glorify the name of God. 그러니까 이 구스다 세미나도 이 이필립이라는 강사의 이름을 또는 바브라미라는 저자의 그 이름을 내는 게 아니라 이 구스다 세미나 통해서 예수 그리스도의 이름을 내고자 하는 거예요. And these history redemption seminars that we're conducting here, this is not for the reason of making a name for the, the speaker, Philip Lee, or for the author of the books, Reverend Abraham Park. It's not that. We exist and we're doing these seminars so that we could exalt the name of Jesus Christ. And so when we don't live for the glory of God, but when we start to do things for, to make a name for ourselves, that is the moment when we are building the Tower of Babel. 그래서 창세기 11장 4절에 바벨탑을 쌓으면서 사람의 이름을 냈다라고 적혀 있어요. So if you look at Genesis chapter 11 verse 4, it says that as they were building the Tower of Babel, they were trying to make a name for themselves. 그래서 하나님께서 바벨탑을 중단시키기 위해서 그들의 언어, 이 말을 여러 개 만들어 버렸어요. And so in order to stop this construction, what God did was He came down and He confused the languages. 원래는 말이 한 하나밖에 없었어요. See, originally back then they only had one language. 근데 갑자기 말이 여러 개 생긴 거예요. But then all of a sudden their languages were all different. So they could start to speaking different languages. 그래서 말이 한 통이에요. And so they couldn't communicate with each other. 자, 예를 들어서 벽돌 가져와라 그러는데 못 알아먹고 그래서 나무대기 가져오는 거야. 그럼 공사가 안 되는 거야. So for example, when somebody says, hey, bring me some brick, the, the guy will bring you some wood. So they couldn't con continue the construction. 그래서 창세기 11장 9절 말씀 보면 사람들이 같은 언어를 쓰는 사람들끼리 이제 모여 살게 됐대요. So if you look at Genesis chapter 11 verse 9, it says that the people started to spread and they lived amongst the people that spoke their own languages. 그러니까 그 전에는 하나 같이 살았었는데 바벨과 사건 때문에 나눠진 거예요 세상이. So before then, they were all living together as one, but because of the Tower of Babel incident, the earth was divided into language groups. So why do you think the Bible uh, says that the earth was divided in the days of Peleg? world is 
is our faith. 그러면 그 믿음은 어떻게 생기느냐? 로마서 10장 17절 보면은요. 믿음은 하나님의 말씀을 들을 때 믿음이 생깁니다. And how do we get faith? In Romans chapter 10 verse 17 it tells us that when we hear the word of God that it becomes faith in us. 그러니까 여러분들 그래서 하나님 말씀에 열심히 들어야 되는 거예요. And that is why we have to diligently listen and hear the word of God. 내가 주일날 하루 교회 나와가지고 하나님 말씀을 들을 수 있죠. I can come to the church on the Lord's Day once a week and to listen to the Word of God. Now, by listening to the Word of God just once a week on the Lord's Day, how can you overcome the world like that? That's why we come to church on, on Wednesday to receive the Word of God once again so that we, we can overcome the world. 여러분들이 오늘 이 세미나 참석해가지고 오늘도요 세미나 참석하기 전과 세미나에 참석 후를 비교해 보세요. 여러분이 그만큼 믿음이 더 많이 생긴 거예요. So tonight the fact that you're here at the seminar will change you, right? So if you compare yourself to what you were before the seminar and after the seminar, you realize that your faith had grown. 왜? 여러분이 그만큼 말씀, 하나님의 말씀을 지금 들었잖아요. 그 믿음이 그만 생긴 거예요. Why? Because you have listened to the word of God here, right? So that means you have received faith because of that. So here at the History of Redemption Seminars, we only teach the word of God. We don't teach you anything else. Area is called the land of Canaan. 그러면 이제 이쪽에 
이렇게 티그리스가 이르고 이렇게 유파데스가 이르러요. And then on top here we have the river Tigris and then the river Euphrates flowing down. 자 그러면 여기가 여기가 어, 갈대야 우루라는 곳이 우루 갈대야 우루. Right there, that's the place called Ur of the Chaldeans. 그래서 이제 노아의 후손들이 홍수 후에 여기서 사는 거예요. 여기서. So Noah's descendants after the flood lived in this area. 그리고 여기가 지금 지금 지금으로 따지면 이라크라는 나라의 에, 지역 이라크. And today that would be in the region where we call Iraq right now. 근데 거기 가면은 진짜로 바벨탑에 살았던 흔적이 남아 있어요. And if you go there right now, even now they still have the remains of where they used to build the tower of Babel. 그래서 얼마 전에 TV에서 과학적으로 다 분석했더니 진짜로 거기가 바벨탑에 살았던 지역이라고 다큐멘터리 나왔어요. And not too long ago there was a documentary on TV where they uh, scientists went and, and actually analyzed all of these things and they found that this is actually the place where they had built the tower of Babel. 그래서 거기 가면은 지금도 벽돌 벽돌이 있고. 그다음에 까만 그 몰탈 있잖아요. 그 아스팔트 만드는 까만 거 그런 것들 지금도 많이 발견됐어요. So if you go there now, they still find bricks that they used back then, and still find tar or pitch that they used to build tar of Babel. 그래서 여기서 이 벨렉이 바벨탑을 쌓고 지을 지은 거죠. So that's the area where Peleg actually built the tower of Babel, and he started sitting. 자, 그런데 놀라운 사실은 이제 이쪽에 여기가 이제 우르고 그럼 벨렉의 후손이 아브라함이잖아요. 그래서 아브라함도 옛날에 바로 여기 우르에서 갈대야 우르 여기 살았던 거예요. And what's amazing is that Abraham is also descendant of Peleg, and Peleg, uh, Abraham used to live in Ur of the Chaldeans. 자 그리고 이쪽에 올라가면은 유브라데스강 상류에 하란이라는 곳이. And if you go up river to the uh, up of the uh, Euphrates, uh, there is a place called Haran there. 그리고 이쪽에 알레포라는 지역이 있어요. 알레포. And then over here, there is another place called Aleppo. 그런데 이 알레포 지역에서 땅을 파더니 옛날 글자가 생겨진 투판, 옛날 글자가 생겨진 투판이 엄청나게 많이 발견됐어요. And around the region of Aleppo, they were doing some excavation, and they found a lot of clay tablets, ancient clay tablets, around that area. 고고학자들이 그것을 해독해 봤더니 거기에 놀라운 사실이 기록돼 있었어요. And when the archaeologists deciphered this, they found some amazing things from these tablets. 그게 뭐냐? 에벨이, 에벨이라는 사람이 이쪽으로 이사를 와가지고 에블라. And what they found was that a person named Eber had migrated to this place, to this area, and they built it, and he established a kingdom called Ebla, which believed in God. 그러니까, so what this is telling us is, remember, when they were building the Tower of Babel, Pele was one of the people who was taking the lead in this work. Because the world was a flood, because the world was full of 
sin. So why do you want to sin like this? Class going to church. 그런데 벨레기 듣지 않았어요. But Pele would not listen to them. 그러니까 여러분들이 이렇게 성경을 자세히 연구하고 성경의 연대를 자세히 연구하면은 드라마를 보듯이 그 당시 상황이 그려지는 거예요. So when you read the Bible carefully and when you study the chronology and the years of the Bible like this, then when you read the Bible, it'll unfold like a drama before your eyes. It'll be very interesting. 그래서 드라마가 재밌어 보세요. 화장실을 안 가고 그냥 보잖아요. You know, when you watch TV, those dramas or TV shows, if they're really fun and exciting, you don't even go to the bathroom, you're just watching it and you're still a trance by it. But the Bible is more exciting than any of those shows. They all lived, they left her and lived 
circulated around the Quran. 그러니까 아브라함 조상 중에서 이 엘리부터 데라까지는 우리에 살고 있었고. So amongst the Abraham's ancestors, from Peleg down to Terah, they were living in Ur of the Chaldeans. 그리고 에벨부터 노아까지 그 위에 조상들은 이쪽 하란 근처에 살고 있었어요. But starting with Eber and up all the way up to Noah, they were living near Haran. 그러니까 so in other words, Abraham had two homes. And so Abraham called his uh, called Ur of the Chaldeans his homeland, but also he called Haran his homeland as well. So remember, Abraham was living in Haran, and then he came into Canaan. Now think about this. If there were no relatives, uh, or his father was not there in Haran, then God didn't need to say, Leave your relatives and your father, right? It was because there were relatives there that he told him to leave his relatives. 자, 제가 조금 이따 공부를 하겠지만은 원래 아브라함은 우리에 살았었어요. So we're going to study this later again. But remember, originally Abraham lived in Ur. 그리고 이 우루에서 아브라함이 이렇게 유브라데를 건너서 하란으로 들어갔어요. And then he left Ur, and then he crossed the river Euphrates to go to Haran. 그리고 하란에서 다시 가나안 땅으로 75년에 떠났어요. And then he left Haran to go to Canaan when he was 75 years old. 자, 창세기 12장 4절 찾아보세요. Let's all turn to Genesis chapter 12 verse 4. 창세기 12장 4절. Genesis chapter 12 verse 4. 자, 이해를 돕기 위해서 창세기 11장 31절 먼저 읽어볼게요. To help us understand, let's read Genesis chapter 11, verse 31 first. Genesis chapter 11, verse 31 says, And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went out together from Ur of the Chaldeans in order to enter the land of Canaan, and they went as far as Haran and settled there. So you see here, they were living in Ur, and they were originally supposed to go to Canaan, but they stopped in the middle at a place called Haran. And then when he left Haran to go to Canaan, Abraham was 75 years old. Let's read Genesis chapter 12, verse 4. Ready? So Abraham went forth as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. Now Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. So how old was Abraham when he left Haran? 75 years old, right? So when he left Haran, he was 75. Now let's look at Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. 지금 11장 1절부터 4절은 연결되는 말씀이에요. So Genesis 12 verses 1 through 4 they're all connected here. 그래서 11장 1절에 내 고향과 본토 친척 아비 집을 떠나라 그랬잖아요. So there in Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 it says go forth from your country your relatives and your father's house, right? 지금 11장 1절은 아브라함이 우루에 있을 때 하신 말씀이 아니라 하나님이 있을 때 하신 말씀이에요. See, Genesis 12, 1 is the, the word that God spoke to Abraham, not when he was in Ur, but when he was in Haran. So here God says, leave from your relatives, right? That means there were relatives in Haran, right? So there were clearly relatives of Abraham living in Haran at this time. And who were they? There were Eber and all of the ancestors all the way up to Noah. And as he sent his servant to find a wife for his son Isaac, 
He sends it to Haran and says, that's my homeland. That's what it says in Genesis chapter 24 verse 4. And so Abraham had two homelands. One is Ur of the Chaldeans and the other is Haran. And in reality, archaeologists did, did an excavation and they found these clay tablets that tell us that Abraham's ancestors lived near Haran. So you see, these people that remain at the places of sin, where they continue to sin, these people all die early. But the people who left the place of sin, they all lived long. So I hope that all of you will live a diligent and faithful life of faith. And when you do that, you will have the blessing of longevity. So you see, God will bless even the water that you drink. You know, the human body is 70% water. So since the body is 70% water, if we are truly thankful to God, then we will have good health. So you should test this out. Do an experiment. Have two cups of water like this. And so this one cup of water, you just curse it every day, right? You dirty water or whatever. But to the other cup of water, say, I love you, thank you, and bless that water all the time. And then after that, you freeze the water slightly, and then you use a special camera to take a picture of it. There was a, a, a scientist in Japan who did this experiment. And when he found that the water that they cursed, the molecules are all very crushed and they don't look too good, and it's got uh, five-sided molecules. And these five-sided pentagonal molecules are what you find near cancer cells. But the water that got blessed all the time, when they took the picture of it, the molecules look very pretty. And the water has six-sided molecules, and that's very good for your mouth. So our body is 70% water, right? It's full of water. So when you say, I love you and thank you, and you bless yourself like this, then the water in your body, the molecule becomes very good. But I am water, right? But if you start cursing it, then the molecules all get crushed and destroyed, and it gets very bad, and that's why you get sick. So your husband is water, your children are water as well. So when you bless uh, them, then they will all do well too. But if you start cursing your children and say, oh, I wish you were dead or things like that, then your children get sick. You know, they say all kinds of bad things to your children, right? And they say, well, you know, what can you do? And then they say to their husbands, you know, because I met you, my life is ruined, you know? And then the, the husband gets cursed like that and they get sick. 
근데 아무리 힘들고 어려워도 감사하면은요 기적이 일어났어요. But no matter how difficult things may get, if you give thanks, if you are thankful, then you will experience a miracle. 아니 남자만 5천 명, 그다음에 여자들 아이들 나이 드신 분들 합치면 수만 명이 지금 에스다 들판에 모인 거예요. There was only there were 5,000 men alone. That means if you count the women, the children, the senior citizens, there was tens of thousands of people gathered at the field there. 그런데 보리떡 다섯 개, 물고기 두 마리밖에 없어요. 누구 이게 끝이에요? And they only had five loaves of bread and two fish. Who could he feed with that? 우리 같은 경우 불평할까요? 아, 이것 가지고 어떻게 다 먹냐고 이러면서 불평할까요? If it were us, we would have complained, right? How could we feed anybody with this little food? 
this, he desired that Noah's faith would be passed on down to the generation of Abraham. 자, 왜냐면, 홍수 때, 홍수 전에 어떤 일이 있었는지, 홍수 때 어떤 일이 있었는지는 노아밖에 모르잖아요. 그러니까 노아가 살아있어야 자식들한테 가르칠 수 있을 거 아니에요. Why is this? Because remember, what happened before the flood and what happened during the flood, Noah's the only one who knows about this. And so Noah has to be alive to teach this to his descendants. 그러면, 노아하고 아브라함하고 과연 만났을까요? 안 만났을까요? Now then, do you think that Noah and Abraham actually met each other? 우리가 정확하게 답을 알수 없지만 성경을 통해서 우리가 어, 추정할 수 있는 일들이 있어요. We cannot know for sure if they did meet each other, but through the Bible we can make a good guess about it. 자 보세요. 아브라함이 하란에서 75세에 가나안으로 들어갔어요. So remember, Abraham left Haran for Canaan when he was 75 years old. 아까 창세기 12장 사진에 읽었죠? Remember, we read that in Genesis chapter 12 verse 4. 자 그러면 아브라함이 우루에서 하란으로 떠날 때몇 살에 떠났을까요? So that when Abraham left Ur to go to Haran, how old do you think he was? 그건 성경에 안 나와요. That's not in the Bible, actually. 그런데 하여튼 노아가 아니 어, 아브라함이 하란에서 오랫동안 살았던 건 사실이에요. But we know for sure that Abraham lived in Haran for a long time. 어떻게 알수 있느냐? How do we know this? 성경을 보니까 아브라함이 하란에서 재산을 많이 모았대요. Now when you look at the Bible, it says that Abraham amassed a lot of wealth when he was in Haran. 아니, 아브라함이 우루에서 떠날 때는 아무 재산 없이 뒤털털 떠났어요. When Abraham left Ur, he left with nothing. 그런데 하란에서 떠날 때, 가나안으로 떠날 때, but when he left Haran, he left Haran a, a very rich person. 그리고 아브라함 주변에 사람들이 엄청 많이 모였대요. And also Abraham had a lot of he had amassed a lot of people, gathered a lot of people around him as well. 그래서 나중에 여기 소돔에 소돔에 조카 옷이 살잖아요. 소돔에. And then later on, his nephew Lot lived in Sodom, right? 그런데 이 소돔이 소돔에서 이 로지 붙잡혀가지고 쫙 북쪽까지 잡혀가요. And then when he was living in Sodom, he was taken captive by some kings, and he was taken all the way up north like this. 호바라고 아주 북쪽이에요. He was taken all the way to a place called Hoba, which is up north. 그런데 아브라함이 318명을 끌고 자기 집안에 있는 군대에 318명을 끌고 로스를 부여 오잖아요. And Abraham takes 318 of his servants that, that were in his household and goes up to save Lot. 그 사람들이 다 하란에서 모인 사람들이에요. And all 318 of those people are people that he had gathered around him at Haran. 그러니까 재산도 많이 모으고 사람도 많이 모은 걸볼때 하여튼 하란에서 꽤 오래 살았다는 것은 알수 있죠. So the fact that he had gathered a lot of people in Iran, he had amassed a lot of wealth in Iran, leads us to believe that he had lived quite a long time in Iran. See, this is why you have to come to these history events and seminars and listen. If you had not listened to this tonight, then you would never have even imagined in your mind about these things. But since you came to the seminar tonight, now you can think about this. Now your sights are being brought. So I would ask that you all purchase the History of Redemption series by Reverend Abraham Park and read these books many times over. And when you do that, your horizons will be broadened. And your eyes will be open to the Bible. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 12, verse 5. Genesis chapter 12, verse 5. Genesis 12, 5 says, And Abram took 
Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, and all their possessions which they had accumulated, and the persons which they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan. Thus they, they came to the land of Canaan. Yeah. So it clearly states that, right? So, Now let's think, if Abraham had left Ur before he was 58 years old and went to Haran, that means at that time around Haran, around Haran Noah was living there. Then there was a possibility that he could have met Noah. So when we read the Bible carefully like this, then we are able to discover God's profound and mysterious administration of redemption. Now what do the people call Abraham? They called him a Hebrew. The word Hebrew in the Hebrew language is Ibri and it means to cross the river. So when we call them the Hebrew people, it means these are the people that have crossed the river. So Abraham So Abraham is a person who had crossed the river Euphrates. Actually Abraham crossed the river Euphrates twice. So the first time he crossed it, he went from Ur to Haran, and then the second time he crossed it when he went from Haran to Canaan. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 14, verse 13. Uh, let's look at Genesis chapter 10, verse 21. Yeah. 
더 적으세요. 자, 이렇게 이렇게. 창세기 10장에는 세방 야벳의 족보가 이렇게 있어요. Genesis chapter 10 records the genealogy of both of all three Shem, Ham, and Japheth. 그런데 창세기 10장 2절에 10장 2절에 야벳의 족보가 나오죠. So in Genesis chapter 10 verse 2 it talks it lists the genealogy of Japheth. 그 다음에 창세기 10장 6절에 함의 족보가 나와요. And in Genesis chapter 10 verse 6 it lists the genealogy of the sons of Ham. 그리고 창세기 10장 21절부터 셈의 족보가 등장을 해요. And then starting in Genesis chapter 10 verse 21 we get to the list of uh, the genealogy of uh, the sons of Shem. 그런데 셈의 족보를 시작하면서 뭐라고 이야기하냐면 셈은 에벨 모든 자손의 조상이 된다. 이렇게 세마고 갑자기 에벨을 연결시키는 거예요. And now here, as God starts the genealogy of Shem, at the beginning, God says, uh, Shem is the father of all the children of Eber. So all of a sudden, in starting this genealogy of Shem, God connects Shem to Eber. This is a very important verse. So here it is teaching us that the spiritual flow of the will of God went from Noah to Shem and now from Shem to Eber. 그런데 이 에벨 이 에벨을 히브리어로 이렇게 써요. 에벨르 히브리어로 에벨르라고 해요. And the name Eber in Hebrew is written like this. It's Eben. 그런데 이 에벨은 또 뭐냐면 강을 건너다는 뜻이에요. And the name Eber Eber also means to cross the river. 그리고 벨레기 밤에 잡아서 죄질 때 에벨은 유브라데 강을 건너가지고 이쪽 알레포 하란 쪽으로 이사했잖아요. 그러니까 에벨도 히브리 인이라 이 말. 강을 건너다. So when Pele was building the Tower of Babel, when he was sitting like this, Eber left and he crossed the river Euphrates and went to Haran and near Aleppo. In other words, Eber is also a Hebrew. 그래서 히브리인이다 이 말은 뭐냐면 에벨의 자손이다 이런 뜻이야 에벨의 자손이다. So when we call somebody a Hebrew person, what that means is that they are descendants of Eber. 그런데 이 에벨의 자손 중에서 자 여기 보세요. 여기 보세요. 에벨의 자손들 중에서 다 지금 우루에 머물러서 다 죄짓고 있었어요. 전부 다. But now look. Amongst all the descendants of Eber, every one of them was remaining in Ur and they were all committing sins. 그래서 여호수아, 여호수아 이십사장 이절 삼절 보면 아브라함의 아버지 게라랑 조상들이 다 유브라데 강에서 죄 짓고 있었다고 기록돼 있어요. 무슨 소리야? So if you look in Joshua chapter twenty-four, verses two through two and three, it tells us that Abraham's father Terah and all of his ancestors were all living by the Euphrates and Ur, and they were all committing idolatry. 그런데 지금 이 사람들이 전부 다 여기 오루에 살고 있었는데 하나님이 여기서 아브라함을 선택해서 불러낸 거예요. So all of these people were living in the earth, the Chaldeans. They were all sitting, and amongst them, God called Abraham out, and He brought him out of her. 그래서 에벨이 살고 있는 쪽으로 아브라함을 불러가지고 이사를 시킨 거죠. And so God called Abraham out. And he made a move to Haran near where Eber was living. 아니 왜그 많은 도시 중에서 하필이면 하란에 살겠어요? 거기 에벨을 들었던 조상들이 살고 있었기 때문에 그쪽으로 간 거예요. So amongst all of those cities around, why do you think he chose Haran to go there? It is because Eber and all the ancestors were living around that area. 그러니까 에벨에게 머물렀던 하나님의 뜻이 아브라함에게 연결이 된 거예요. And now the will of God, which was with Eber, is now being passed on to Abraham. 그래서 아브라함을 에벨의 자손이다, 히브리인이다 이렇게 부른 거예요. And that is why Abraham was called a, a descendant of Eber. In other words, he was a Hebrew. 그러면 오늘날 아브라함한테 머물렀던 하나님의 뜻이 누구한테 전달돼야 되느냐? 바로 각자 유 여러분에게 전달돼야 돼. Today, the will of God, which was with Abraham, it has to be passed on to each and every one of us here today, to you, right now. 그래서 오늘 창조한 여러분들도 전부 별명이 하나 생겼는데 오늘부터 히브리예요. All of you who are here tonight, you all have a new nickname, and that is you are a Hebrew. 여러분들이 히브리인이야. You all have to be 
become a Hebrew. Hebrew는 죄악의 유브라드라만 다 건너 자. The Hebrews are all people who have crossed the sinful river Euphrates. 그런데 요한 계시록을 보세요. Now, if you look at the book of Revelation, 하나님의 마지막 죄악, 마지막 심판이 유브라드에 쏟아져. God's final plagues and God's final judgments are all poured out at the river Euphrates. 그래서 그 여섯 번째 나팔 재앙이 있어요. So we have the sixth trumpet plague. 그런데 그 나팔 재앙이 요한계시록 9장 14절 보면 유브라데 쏟아. Now in Revelation chapter 9 verse 14 it tells us that the plague of the sixth trumpet is poured out upon the river Euphrates. 그 다음에 여섯 번째 대적 재앙이 있어요. And then there's also the plague of the sixth bowl of wrath. 그런데 그 대적 재앙이 요한계시록 16장 12절 보면 또 유브라데에 쏟아져요. And in Revelation chapter 16 verse 12 that plague of the bowl of wrath, the sixth bowl of wrath, was also poured out upon the river Euphrates. 그러니까 유브라데에 머물러 있는 사람들은 마지막 때 in other words, the people who are remaining by the river Euphrates, they will all receive the final plagues and the judgments of God. However, the Hebrews are the people that have left the river Euphrates. In other words, when we become Hebrew people, then we will not receive the plagues, but we will all survive. So when Abraham came into the first 
came into the land of Canaan, God told him, Abraham, you shall be a blessing.
아버지 오늘 또 구성사 세미나를 통해서 하신 은혜를 주시니 진심으로 감사드립니다. Father God, we truly thank you for this great blessing that you have given to us through the history of redemption seminar. 지금까지 불평하고 짜증내며 살았던 것을 용서해 주시고 Father God, please forgive us for living in, in, in complaining and grumbling in our lives until today. 이제부터는 하나님께 진심으로 감사하면서 살아갈 수 있도록 인도해 주시옵소서. You enable us to truly live lives that are thankful to you with all of our hearts. 아브라함이 말씀과 동행한 것처럼 우리도 다지 말씀과 붙잡고 살아갈 수 있도록 인도해 주시옵소서. Just as Abraham walked with the word of God, help us to hold on to your word until the end. 아버지 하나님 이 시간에 사람이 문해질 수 없는 많은 문제를 가지고 간절히 기도하기 원합니다. And at this time, we earnestly desire to pray to you of all the problems that we have that we cannot solve with our own strength. 특별히 육신의 아픈 부분에 오른손을 얹고 기도하기 원합니다. We especially want to pray by laying our right hand upon the parts of our body where we are sick. 내 손이 아니라 주님의 오른손으로 안수하여 주시옵소서. My hand, but may it be your hand, Lord, that you lay upon my body.